Hello everyone, welcome to my Intelligence Scaling 101 video. Today we'll be taking our first step to acquire the tools we need to analyze a character's intellectual abilities. There are so many terms, misconceptions, and perspectives that we need to cover and understand for this community to grow. I'm here to take on that challenge. I'm your host, Sag Under Heaven, and I'll be taking you on this journey on how to scale intelligence. We're going to start with the absolute basics, since a lot of us are new to intelligence scaling. So what is intelligence? It may initially seem like a surface level question, but so much deeper than we think. The definition of intelligence is the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills, or according to Richard Heyer, the leading psychologist on intelligence studies, it is the ability to think and learn. A basic definition for such a complex concept. So now let's add another layer, which is scaling intelligence. What would that look like? Well, that would be quantifying the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills, which is pretty meta since we use our intellect to scale the concept of it. And that realization proves the existence of intellect itself. Pretty cool, huh? Anyways, the definition is still a bit broad. Let's give it a better definition. Intelligence scaling is a systematic evaluation and categorization of intellectual abilities by observing, perceiving, and measuring a character's cognitive achievements. This approach establishes a spectrum based on well-defined and universally applicable categories to represent varying levels of intellectual prowess. Trust me, I get it. This may sound overwhelming, but after this video, you have a much better grasp on intelligence scaling. The concept of intelligence and outsmarting is quite a daunting venture. It's nuanced, challenging, and goes far deeper than one could ever imagine. It requires a lot of attention to detail and critical thinking. I mean, even psychologists have been testing the bounds of human intellect for decades now. The research is vast and insightful, yet the leading psychologists are not even close to truly identifying the gargantuan orbit of intelligence. So if you're interested in such a thing or want to learn more about intelligence as a whole, you're in the right place. Before we get to the central point of how to scale intelligence, we must understand something. This isn't power scaling. We're not established, well-known, or significant enough to stand on our own. There are a lot of newcomers that don't know anything about scaling. So we need to understand the most fundamental concepts before we get into intelligence scaling. This video is going to focus much more on the essence of intelligence scaling versus the actual technical terms. Those will come in a future video. Today, I'm going to do something different from traditional one-on-one -on -one videos. For my first video regarding intellect, I'm going to be focusing on how we human beings interact with intelligence and the main problems we must overcome so we can have better analysis and structure to our scaling. The reason why I'm structuring it this way is so we know what exactly holds us back from scaling intellect accurately. And only then can we take the steps to scale it. So for full disclosure, I plan to cover every possible perspective of intelligence scaling, giving you guys the entire blueprint on how to scale from all different sides. So if you're a passionate critic of mine, which I know some of you are watching are, these videos will help you prove your points even if your opinions are contrary to mine. With everything out of the way, let's begin. There are so many different ways people scale intelligence. Do you ever feel frustrated when people don't see what you see in a character? Or you can't fathom how other characters could possibly scale this high? Well, the reason why there is such a divide in the hierarchical standings of characters like Light, Lelouge, Johan, Koji, and Yuichi, just to name a few, is because of three main problems that we must understand before composing possible situations. Point number one, people have invalid and unsound predispositions towards their certain characters and intellect as a whole. Of course, this is a universal problem of cognitive bias and a lack of understanding that exists with all realms of life, but it is extremely prominent here. And before you say, but Sag under heaven, everyone is biased, look at classroom lead scalers. They scale Koji above my favorite character, so I'm going to make hundreds of edits tarnishing him without even looking into his feats. That's how some of you think. Or equally as bad, you think just because you've watched a show or read a novel slash manga, that automatically means you're able to scale that character properly when you can't even name three feats from that user. Or most commonly, you can contextualize a character's feats, but you still can't distill why those feats are intelligent. Or maybe you focus too much on just one overarching theme of intellect. Like for example, you value thought complexity and layers. Or the opposite, you value efficiency and effective plans. Since you're inclined to one approach, of course you're gonna scale characters differently and higher because they resonate with your proclivities. How do you know your scaling is correct? And how do you get to the truth of who is smarter? To scale intelligence properly, you must try to be as honest and critical as possible. Our first step is to understand ourselves. Ask yourself three things. Which aspects of intellect do I value over the other? Can I prove my way of perceiving intellect is superior in, in the given context? Do I understand the best possible feats and arguments for both characters I choose to scale? There are a myriad of questions one must ask themselves, and after you ask yourself these three questions, 
your mind will naturally venture off and think of other vital questions that are related to how one scales. The reason why bias, incorrect definitions, and lackluster analysis exists within intelligence scaling is that it is so difficult to prove someone wrong, and most people cannot agree on a basis, starting point, or a universal prompt that allows us to get to the truth or at least a mutual understanding of who is truly smarter. If I were to say Light Yagami is smarter than Johann Lieber because Light was able to defeat the world's greatest detective, Al Lalit, which is a terrible argument in a vacuum. How would you prove me wrong? Where is the implication of intelligence and what exactly are we quantifying? Defeating the world's greatest detective implies intelligence, but it's impossible to quantify how much and exactly which type of intelligence Light possesses unless we look deeper. When one fails to communicate logical counterpoints to a particular stance verbally, well, the other person's convictions grow upon that stance and it's difficult to have fluidity and common ground within scaling. In the current state of intelligence scaling, it's challenging to ascertain valid and sound reasoning. Everyone believes their scaling is superior, and there's nothing we can do about it to prove them wrong. Since there's such a lack of consideration of possible perspectives we don't account for, and there's just a serious deficiency of understanding intellect. Point number two, most people perceive intelligence based on a subjective value system. And that subjective value system is always ambiguous. To make sense of this, I need to convey a real life postulation. There are three things human beings will often reinforce. One is their morality, two, their autonomy, and three, their intellect, which is what we're gonna focus on. Even those who doubt their overall mental competence often find a niche in which they excel and take pride in. This specific area becomes a focal point for them, serving as a source of perceived intelligence and accomplishment. Take for instance an individual who has poor academic performance, meager reasoning capabilities, and lacks cognitive awareness. This very person will still be the proud of the fact they can make connections easily, they can understand human emotions, and they can garner attention. They will justify this innate ability as a brilliant gift that satisfies their conditions of intellect. They interpret their interpersonal abilities as their primary condition for being smart. However, when you ask that person to break down what makes the act of having great social skills an intelligent endeavor, well, you'll be hit with all sorts of reasons that are often ambiguous and inapplicable to intellect. Then the individual will create a subjective value system based on those conditions he created for being smart. Meaning that when this individual scales feats of intellect, he will naturally value characters that will have high social skills, EQ, and charisma because that's what he considers intelligent through his own experiences. So we can conclude just based on his experiences and his predispositions of intellect that this person will most likely scale Johann Liebert or someone like Al Lalit. I'm not saying this is 100% the case every time, but I'm illuminating why it's paramount to understand yourself and your subjective value system so you can scale beyond your system and so you can be less ambiguous when you lay out your reasoning. We can go even further with this with another example. My friend Flamtart, he lacks knowledge, verbal expertise, social skills, and the ability to plan ahead. He's also quite lazy, but he has a tremendous ability to problem solve, he's very introspective, he has amazing cognition, and he's very creative. Yet, just like the previous example, Flamtart cannot define what aspects of himself makes him intelligent, and he will succumb to scaling via intuition. He's a great problem solver, but how did I determine such a thing? That's what I want you guys to start understanding and thinking of. Start conceptualizing why you think the people in your life and yourself are smart. I keep adding layers to your questioning. For example, you think your best friend is smart because he gets good grades. So ask yourself, why does he get good grades? You then conclude, well, he works hard and has a good memory. Then ask yourself, does hard work and memory suffice my conditions of intellect? All of a sudden, you start rethinking what makes someone intelligent and your subjective value system evolves. The problem of ambiguity leads to a serious issue. When everyone has such a warped and subjective sense of intellect, it leads to the unfortunate reality of meritocracy-based truth. What do I mean by that? Since intelligence scaling is so challenging, ambiguous, and pretty new compared to something like power scaling, it creates a juncture that allows excellent communicators, strong debaters, and highly intelligent individuals to fabricate and regulate what the truth is. The truth isn't built upon objective measurements or genuine appraisal. Instead, it's concocted through how well you can articulate your beliefs, which is flawed. Now, don't get me wrong. You should 100% strive to be a better debater, or more importantly, get to a point where you can adequately articulate your reasoning. We need more of this, and this helps us get to the truth, and more importantly, it's a lifeline on how we share and create new thought-provoking ideas. However, it cannot be the basis for the truth. Just because you can articulate your points better than another doesn't mean you're correct. There needs to be a process before the verbalization that everyone can universally attempt. But again, we need to be able to back up our beliefs through proper reasoning. It's vital. Many things can consider intelligence. The human intellect knows no bounds. It manifests in such diverse ways. Even things like our personality and our morals affect how we comprehend intelligence. Now, because intellect is illuminated in a seemingly infinite manner with near infinite outputs, it naturally causes us to value different aspects of intelligence over the other. Someone like Johan will value EQ and the use of emotional manipulation, whereas someone like Light Yagami will use the use of psychology, deduction, 
and logical manipulation, and Lelouch will gravitate towards philosophy, cunning uses of strategy, and metacognition. You can see how he naturally scales certain aspects of outsmarting over the other. This all ties back to point number one. The entire process of differentiating aspects of intellect in a value system causes our predispositions to grow. We can't prove each other wrong or even discuss on the same playing field since everyone's idea of intellect differs from each other. You may be wondering why I keep bringing up the notion of proving someone wrong. But here's why. We need ways to prove each other wrong when it comes to outsmarting because it stops the infinite regression of subjective and flawed scaling. If you can logically prove someone wrong and they agree, well, you two have a universal understanding. Both parties have investigated the fundamentals of intellect instead of one's proclivities of it. If we can't prove each other wrong or have a universal prompt that allows us, that allows everyone to quantify intellect, it then comes to a point where we quantify one's proclivities of intellect versus the actual essence of intelligence. In other words, we focus much more on the subjective than the objective. Our conclusions don't matter. We need to focus strictly on our reasoning. This is an epistemic matter. For those that don't know, epistemology is a theory of knowledge. It seeks to understand how knowledge is acquired, what knowledge even is and counts as, and it explores the limits of our understanding. This is the primary school of thought that is present within intelligence scale. Point number three. There needs to be more objectivity, universality, and overall understanding to scale successfully. We need sufficient and universal conditions. Essentially, we should be under the notion that scaling intellect is much more objective than subjective, at least the process of it. Not our conclusions, you can think what you want, but our reasoning needs to be cogent. You're more than welcome to believe that Lelouge versus Light or Moriarty versus Johan is a subjective result, but it is crucial to assume and forego that the process of deciding the victor comes from objective means. If you believe that intelligence scaling is subjective like a lot of people do, I mean all subjective, 100%, well, there will be no room for discourse, debating will be pointless, profound ideas wouldn't hold any weight, and scaling intellect would just be an expression of philosophy. It would be my subjective value system versus yours. Okay, so what is the best method to accurately determine a character's intellectual prowess? What is intelligence scaling even comprised of? How do we know we're correct? Well, for starters, let's eliminate the ambiguous nature of intellect and let's finally add some universal touches. To offset the near-infinite interpretations of intelligence, we use universal categories that are directly related to outsmart. These categories guide us and help deviate our attention to the most important aspects of intelligence scaling. Now, there can be hundreds of categories, and if you view the edits of scalers, you'll see there's a fair amount of variance between them. However, there are certain categories that are just more important to outsmarting than others. Now, I believe we should use a wide array of categories, and I'll share all the ones that should be used when determining who is smarter in a separate video. But for now, let's focus on the main ones. Those being full-scale IQ, emotional quotient, thinking, reasoning, manipulation, deception, strategy, planning, anticipation, adaptability, creativity, and cold reading. These are the categories that are correlated the most with outsmarting. But of course, there are many more like observation and perception that can be just as vital. And most of the ones that I listed have subcategories that help us be as precise as possible, which I'll, again, I'll cover in a different video. We're not worried about defining or interpreting them in this video. Our first objective with these categories is to locate feats that we analyze and allocate those feats into these categories. This way, we at least know what we're looking for. We have a goal. We can attain an organized vision that allows us to scale properly. The ambiguous nature fades away. Now, feats and their placements within categories are not mutually exclusive, meaning one feat can cover planning, deception, manipulation, and so on. 99% of feats will have category overlay, and it's your job to break down what exact categories that feat falls into. It's also paramount not to pick and choose certain categories over others. For example, let's say you want to scale Johan versus El Lalit. The categories you choose to analyze and scale are knowledge, thinking, reasoning, observation, perception, and cult reading. Do you see the problem here? You chose categories that crown L. We can do the opposite and only choose categories like manipulation, deception, cunning, and EQ, which would heavily favor Johan. To get an accurate read on each character's abilities, you need a wide and diverse scope of categories, where every character has a fair shot. We also cannot fabricate the definition of these categories under any circumstances. I cannot stress this point enough. If you have a different definition of something like strategy and a person B has a different definition of strategy, intelligence scaling becomes arbitrary and only useful for that individual. The difference of opinion should come from our analysis and investigation of these categories, not the definitions of the categories themselves. For example, the definition of deception is to cause someone to believe in something that is not true, where manipulation is to control or influence someone in some way. As you can see, these definitions can certainly correlate in many ways and it can be tricky to differentiate what a manipulation or perception feed is, although I plan to make a video on this covering the two. It's vital to establish proper definitions so that everyone can have universality when scaling. Again, the disagreement should come from our analysis and conclusions of said subjects. We should never be in a position where we are disagreeing over established definitions. 
which so many of us do. Lastly, it's paramount that we don't rank order categories of intelligence. We want to avoid this because it's unfair to certain characters, it diverges us from the actual and intellectual feats of characters, and scaling becomes too subjective once more. It punishes characters that don't use that certain intellectual ability you value so much. Let's say you think light outsmarts El Lalit because you believe deception and manipulation are the most important things in outsmarting. Well, when you rank order categories, you dismiss the possible peaks and versatility other characters have in other categories. It would be unfair to dismiss someone like El Lale because he doesn't have high deception like light. Now think about the opposite view. Let's say your friend Lou values reasoning and cold reading over all other categories. Well, Lou will naturally conclude that L outsmarts light because his reasoning and cold reading is better. This resonates with the problem I laid out earlier, the subjective value system, the lack of universality, and a complete deviation from actual intellectual feats. No one's ever going to be able to get to the actual truth because everyone is valuing different things and we're arguing about categories, not actual feats. We have to scale based on how great the individual feats are within that given category, not the category itself. Now, we can compare L and Light fairly because we're using their strengths and weaknesses on even ground. If we use all categories I mentioned above plus the subsets, we can fairly and accurately gauge Light and L. Okay, so do you remember all those categories I listed off earlier? We're still not ready to scale or define those terms. There's one crucial element that we need to tackle, and that is how we interpret the feats that go into each category. How do we exactly quantify who is superior in each specific category? We know what to look at, but we still need to learn how to distill the most corresponding and relevant information that belongs within each category. Alright, let's recap. In conclusion, we learned the definition of intelligence scaling. We learned that our preconceptions and general approach to intellect is usually flawed since we're unaware on how to distill actual intellect from characters. We learned that intellect can branch off in so many ways and that causes a major rift in scaling. No universality binds our ideas together. We know that our subjective value system is too ambiguous and we need structure to quantify intellect in the first place. We need to broaden our horizons. We understand that we lack objectivity and universal understanding and we need to analyze feats of intellect in a verifiable manner. We must focus on our analysis and reasoning for our conclusions. Finally, we learn to focus our attention on a bevy of categories that directly relate to intellect, so we're not as ambiguous and selective with our approach. In my next video, I'll be covering how to analyze feats of brilliance so we can start scaling our favorite characters and be fulfilled with our results. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this video brought some light onto intelligence scaling. We still have so much more to cover, so I hope you guys will continue with me on this journey. Take care.